So Elon Musk decided to share one of the most ridiculous propaganda pieces ever produced, perhaps the only propaganda film more hysterical than Reefer Madness, and that's not hyperbole. Specifically, he shared What is a Woman by Matt Walsh on Twitter, and he didn't just promote it, he went full mask off and endorsed Walsh's anti-trans agenda, tweeting, This is a major problem. I will be actively lobbying to criminalize making severe irreversible changes to children below the age of consent. Shame on those who advocate this. It is utterly contemptible. Now, Jordan Peterson responded to that, saying, Prison, long term, without parole, no mercy, and maybe for the compliant therapists as well as butchers they enable. And Musk responded to that saying, absolutely. So the head of a major platform, a communication tool for all of us, is calling for the literal imprisonment of doctors who offer gender-affirming care for minors, including therapists. Now, we've talked about what that entails. Gender-affirming care does not include bottom surgery. We're not going to get into that because these people know that they're being deceitful. But this is substantial. In effect, Elon Musk here is coming out as a fascist. To criminalize healthcare for an entire group of people that is fascism. Now, he may be leaning extra hard into this specifically because yesterday the Daily Wire pressured him nonstop and they accused him of censoring his documentary. So this might be an overcorrection on Elon Musk's part, but perhaps he does feel this way because he has a trans daughter. So since his trans daughter doesn't really want to associate with him, perhaps he feels bitter. Perhaps he feels as if she's been indoctrinated. I'm not really sure, but what he did was completely despicable. But after Elon Musk uh, denounced Twitter reducing visibility for the documentary, Twitter's head of trust and safety resigned, presumably in defiance of this decision. And yesterday on The Leftist Mafia, journalist Matt Bender, my co-host, explained that there were reports that Musk himself made the decision to restrict the documentary's visibility in order to lure in advertisers because playing an anti-trans hateful propaganda piece isn't necessarily going to assure the advertisers who left to come back. But whatever the case may be, the heat was too high and Elon Musk decided to reverse that decision and back down. And now I recorded an entire breakdown of this entire kerfuffle yesterday, but since so much has transpired since I recorded that, I thought that it would be helpful to provide you with the additional context and an update before we get to that video. So without further ado, here's what led to this very moment, which I filmed yesterday. Happy Pride Month, my friends. I know that I'm a day late, but when I'm recording this, it is the first day of Pride technically, so I'm not actually late. But by the time you all watch this or most of you see this, I will be one day late. But the demons over at the Daily Wire, they had very big plans for this year's Pride. In fact, Dollar Store Humanist Report Matt Walsh teased his nefarious plans for Pride, writing last week on Twitter that him and his friends over at the Daily Wire had big plans for Pride Month. Stay tuned. You can almost imagine him hitting tweet and then rubbing his hands together and laughing maniacally like this. <laughs> So what exactly was he planning? Well, of course, he was predictably planning to spread anti-LGBTQ plus propaganda on Pride. As if that's any different from his normal behavior on Twitter. We call that a Tuesday for Matt Walsh. But the difference here is that he was going to team up with Twitter to blast his anti-trans propaganda specifically in all of our faces. But in a rare Twitter W, they accidentally thwarted that plan, which led to hysterical conservatives on Twitter. For example, look at this thumbnail from Ben Shapiro. Like I get, I get that the goal is to pretend like Matt Walsh was the victim of censorship, but they unintentionally ended up producing a banger. And I, I genuinely find this hilarious unironically. But the question is what actually happened? Well, Daily Wire CEO, Jeremy Boring broke it down in a very, very long thread. We're talking 16 tweets in particular. We're not going to get to all of them, but he explains that Twitter basically decided to censor Matt Walsh because his documentary, What is a Woman, which they wanted to broadcast on Twitter, was hateful. 
Shocking, I know, but it is hateful. But here's what he says here. Twitter canceled a deal with Real Daily Wire to premiere What is a Woman for free on the platform because of two instances of misgendering. I'm not kidding. One year ago today, we released What is a Woman. To celebrate the occasion and expand the movie's already enormous impact, we decided to give it away for free for 24 hours on Twitter. With Twitter's recent commitments to free speech, we thought it would be the perfect place to distribute the film and drive the conversation forward on one of the most important topics of our day. Twitter responded with enthusiasm and offered us the opportunity to buy a package to host the movie on a dedicated event page and to promote the event to every Twitter user over the first 10 hours. That sounds terrible. We accepted and signed an agreement after we signed. Twitter asked to see the film to better understand what parts may trigger users so they could better prepare their response. They said they were still all hands on deck for launch, so we sent them a screener. After reviewing the film, though, Twitter let us know that not only could we no longer purchase the package they offered, they would no longer provide us any support and would actually limit the reach of the film and label it as hateful conduct because of misgendering. Specifically in the film, a father refers to his 14-year-old daughter as her and a store owner uses the wrong pronoun in a confrontation with a trans person. We reminded Twitter they removed misgendering from their policy, that the term misgendering itself is misleading, and that enforcing such a policy places them on the side of the most radical elements of society, the side most opposed to their commitment to free speech. What a righteous asshole. He's so full of shit. Twitter clarified they only removed misgendering from their policy because they didn't need to be that specific, but that they still consider misgendering abuse and harassment. They gave us the opportunity to edit the film to comply. We declined. When we asked how much they would limit the visibility if we posted the film anyway, Twitter replied that our own followers would not be able to see it in their feeds. This, they said, is part of their speech not reach policy now i've just got to say that this is a very weird deal that twitter struck with the daily wire in the first place because even when ron DeSantis launched his 2024 presidential campaign on twitter it wasn't blasted in all of our faces in fact i didn't know that you had to go to elon musk's page to listen in but we're talking about a situation seemingly where you log on to twitter and you see matt walsh's big dumb face plastered everywhere that's just that's so weird and this is not a normal documentary this is a hateful piece of propaganda so for elon musk to agree to something like this i mean it goes to show you how clueless he is at attracting advertisers now the ceo of the daily wire goes on to explain uh that because elon musk was so committed to free speech that's why all of their hosts decided to post their shows on twitter so he finished by basically saying that he hopes that Elon Musk is going to actually be committed to free speech and has a change of heart. Now, first and foremost, LOL at the notion that Elon Musk cares at all about free speech because he does not. Second of all, it is very bold of the people at the Daily Wire to assume that Twitter's platform can even handle a feature length video, considering that even two minute videos run like shit on the platform since Elon Musk took it over. But Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh both chimed in. Matt Walsh tweeted out a clip uh, from the movie in question that apparently featured the hate Hate speech and Ben Shapiro pointed out that it is limited in its visibility and also Matt Walsh decided to blame trans activists specifically for the censorship because of course he blames them for everything but leftist shit stirrers like myself were quick to point out that there's a conspiracy going on because there's further evidence that Elon Musk might have gone woke and actually permitted the censorship himself. We didn't say that explicitly, but it was implied because not only did Elon Musk hire woke CEO, according to his right wing fans, Linda Yaccarino, and in reality, she's not woke. She's a right winger, but they think she's woke probably because she's a woman. But either way, they think she's woke. But on top of that, take a look at Exhibit A. Tesla marched in a pride parade and Elon Musk himself told bigots in 2018 that Tesla scored a perfect score for LGBTQ plus equality four years in a row. And he then went on to tell bigots to not buy their cars if that's a problem. Most troubling, however, in my opinion, were the rainbow hearts and rainbow that were posted. And something tells me that he's not referring to God's promise to not commit mass 
murder again. It seems like this is confirmation that Elon Musk is woke. But after the Daily Wire sounded the alarm, many blue checks were not very happy with Elon Musk. Motherfuckers who pay for Twitter condemned him and Tim Pool called it bullshit. Even Steven Crowder rushed to defend his former friends turned enemies over at the Daily Wire, despite the bad blood between them. And you know the situation is serious. If Steven Crowder has to swallow his pride and defend people who he very clearly doesn't like, but it turns out that all of the screeching from the right and blue checks was for nothing, because even if free speech isn't necessarily a priority for Twitter, well, Elon Musk made it very clear that he's more than willing to permit hate speech on the platform because he responded to Jeremy Boring explaining this was a mistake specifically by people at Twitter. It is definitely allowed whether or not you agree with using someone's preferred pronouns. Not doing so is at most rude and certainly breaks no laws. I should note that I do personally use someone's preferred pronouns just as I use someone's preferred name, simply from the standpoint of good manners. However, for the same reason, I object to rude behavior, ostracism, or threats of violence if the wrong pronoun or name is used. He's really trying to, uh, both sides it here. But in truth, even though it is logical for right-wingers to question Elon Musk's bona fides when it comes to bigotry, especially given his woke history, he has, to his credit, or lack thereof, been pretty consistent when it comes to one thing, and that is allowing hate speech on the platform. Because according to a report from the Daily Beast, Twitter is failing to remove 99% of hate speech posted by Twitter Blue users, new research has found, and instead maybe boosting paid accounts that spew racism and homophobia. Researchers at the Center for Countering Digital Hate flagged hate speech to the company in tweets from 100 Twitter Blue subscribers. Four days later, they say 99% of the tweets were still up and none of the accounts had been removed. The tweets, which included examples of neo-Nazism, anti-Semitism, racism, and homophobia, violate Twitter's own hate speech policies, the researchers say. The tweets reported by the CCDH included a post claiming Hitler was right, accompanied by a video montage of the dictator, and another saying LGBT activists needed iron in their diet, preferably from a firing squad. Twitter's hateful content policy, updated as recently as April of 2023, outlines that you may not directly attack other people on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, caste, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, religious affiliation, age, disability, or serious disease. The tweets found by the CCDH clearly violate the platform's policies researchers wrote. And I want to reiterate here that they're not just referring to standard bigotry. They are looking at the most heinous tweets on Twitter anti-Semitism, neo-Nazism, and Twitter is failing to remove these tweets even if they violate Twitter's own policies surrounding hate speech. And I understand that Elon Musk made those rules more lax and permits bigotry on the platform, but even by their lower standards, these accounts, they're breaking Twitter's own rules and they're not taking action. And it's not just that they're not taking action that's the problem. The problem is that these accounts are being boosted because they pay for Twitter Blue. So if you pay for Twitter Blue, you give Elon Musk your $8, you are going to be boosted in the algorithm. So their Nazi posts are being boosted, their anti-Semitism is being boosted, and this is what a lot of people are seeing. This is why so many people are dissatisfied with Twitter, because it's become a cesspool. We don't even see the people who we like. It's just blue check dipshits spewing hatred or their unfunny, uncreative posts. Even if these blue checks weren't predominantly ultra conservatives, I mean, I want to see my friends on Twitter. I want to see funny, humorous posts, but we're not seeing that now. These blue checks are being artificially boosted, even if they are saying Nazi shit, sharing pro-Hitler things, calling for genocide against LGBTQ plus people. So to the conservatives worried that Elon Musk has gone woke, I mean, it's fine if you think that. I want you to keep thinking that because the more that these ghouls turn against each other, the better that is for humanity. But I mean, the reality is that the platform is more accepting of hate and bigotry than it's ever been. Woke mom.